Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge the reading of the Word of God. In our culture today, it is totally acceptable to live in contradiction to the Word of God. And understandably so for the world, but what about the church? Also called the Bride of Christ. We hear more condemning rhetoric about homosexuality, but what about fornication? What about adultery? Fornication is generally consensual sexual intercourse between two people not married to each other. So any sexual activity outside of a marital covenant is fornication. Now adultery is a man or woman who has sex with someone other than their wife or husband. So many, if not the majority of people, including myself, have committed fornication because I, for one, have never been married but I have had sex. The difference between me and most who continue to fornicate is that when I confess my sin, I turn away from sin, my sin, meaning I don't do it anymore. Isn't that what repentance is? It's a turning away from, having a change of mindset regarding a certain thing that you used to do, understanding as the Holy Spirit convicts you of your righteousness, that I cannot do this any longer because I know that it does not please God. And I want to please Him in every area, every aspect, every facet of my life and my being and my doing. In my rising and my going and my coming and in my lying down. So knowing that if He says that fornicators, He condemns fornication, He, he even when He met the woman who was caught in the act of adultery, that scenario was not complete because last I checked, two participated in adultery, but they only brought the woman before him. But Jesus, being who he is, he understand human nature. He understand what they were trying to do. He simply said, let the one who is amongst you that is without sin cast the first stone. Now even they knew that that was not true. For the word of God said, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And our justification only comes by Christ Jesus. He's our justifier. And in knowing and understanding how much he loved me, how much he loved me and that he died for me, he gave himself up for me, how can I continue to live a lifestyle that is not pleasing to him? How can I? How can you? What does God say about marriage? What does God say about even spiritual faithfulness? Because many of us have committed Spiritual adultery. Because God says in Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 14. Return faithless people, declares the Lord, for I am your husband. Turn faithless people, declares the Lord, for I am your husband. So even he calls himself our husband. And we have committed spiritual adultery concerning him because we run after other gods. We make idols. We have committed idolaters. We have intimately giving ourselves over to careers and other people and even money because so many of us are so busy chasing money that we lose sight of it and he said first of all we can't have two masters you can't serve God and mammon you can't serve God while you're trying to chase after money spiritual idolatry spiritual adultery I know for many this is a hard lesson because they don't want to stop doing something that satisfies their flesh or carnal nature. Truth be told, it feels good, doesn't it? It feels good, but it's not good for you. When taken out of the confines of God's original intent for sexual relations, it's not good for you. Genesis chapter 2, verse 20b through 24 of the NIV. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to him. God brought the woman to the man. 
Some of us mess up when we go out looking for people in the wrong places to occupy that place of a wife or husband in our lives. And we wonder why all hell breaks loose and there's no peace in our lives because we didn't wait for God to bring our spouses to us. But that's another life lesson in itself. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Sidebar here. God perfect intent when he searched for a suitable helpmate for a man was woman, not another man. Hmm consequences of disobedience to live in contradiction to the original intent of god is disobedience disobedience is defined as the lack of obedience or refusal to comply disregard or transgression the refusal to comply to god's standards his principles his commands to disregard them altogether even to make new laws stating uh well we know what the Supreme Court just did, but you're trying to enact new laws and disregard God's law regarding marriage or transgression. Transgression is the violation of a law or a duty or moral principle. The action of going beyond or overstepping some boundary or limit. God sets boundaries and limits in place for our good because he knows that if you go outside those boundaries and limits, it's for your harm. It's for your detriment. It's for your destruction. Stay within the boundaries and limits of God. He knows what's best. International Standard Bible Encyclopedia defines crime as the act of transgression, the violation of a law or known principle of rectitude, morality, righteousness, correctness, breach of command, offense, sin. So crime, in essence, disobedience is a crime against God, against his kingdom. Galatians 6, verse 7 and 8 of the NIV, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap the destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. Really, in all actuality, in all honesty, we have to make up our mind who we're going to serve. We got to make up our mind who we're going to follow whose standards, precepts, concepts, and commandments we're going to live according to. Because if you want to live according to the world's standards, then you go by all means live accordingly. But you're going to reap the destruction that follows. But if you call yourself a Christian, a follower of Christ, the bride, attached to the bride of Christ, well then you must do what pleases your bridegroom, don't you think? You must stop committing spiritual adultery in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 of the King James Version. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. The NIV reads that same verse as, Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexual immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, or women who have sex with women. Revelation 21, 8 of the NIV. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexual immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be co-signed to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. 1 Corinthians 6, 18 of the NIV. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 of the NIV. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. If indeed you are a blood-bought, born-again child of God. Spirit filled, I might add, child of God, with the gift of God's Spirit dwelling in you. I wonder how many of us every day grieve His Spirit because we choose to do things that are displeasing to Him. In conclusion, the pleasures of sin is but for a moment, it is fleeting, Hebrews 11 25 tells us. 
If you have received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you are no longer your own. The consequences of sin will have an eternal cost. Let me stop right here because I understand people are preaching the grace gospel and it's all good because we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus. And that not in ourselves. It is the gift of God. Our salvation is from Jesus, but it also tells us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Others might say with awe and wonder, but my thing is grace does not give us a license to continue a lifestyle of sin, but grace compels us to live a life that is pleasing to God. Now, the consequence of sin will have an eternal cost. Are you willing to pay that cost just to indulge in a moment of pleasure that will open you up to condemnation, disease, heartache, pain, demonic oppression? And I can go on and on because it is that serious. God loves you and wants you to have his best. If you are committing sin willfully, if your heart is hardened because you continue to do and live outside of the perfect will of God for you, repent. Stop doing it. I'm a change of heart and I change of mind. Ask God to help you stop doing that which displeases Him and empowers you to live a lifestyle that is pleasing to Him. I know people like to say do a three. 360 degrees turn around, but if you do that, you will end up right back where you started. I'm saying do a 180 and follow Jesus, obey Him. John 10.10 10 states that he came to give you life and life more abundantly. James 4.4 4, the NIV, you adulterous people. Don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Meaning, if you continue to live according to the world's way and what the world says is okay and how the world defines the laws of God, then you are in opposition to God's rule and you make yourself an enemy of God. Isaiah 33, 14 of the NIV. The sinners in Zion are terrified. Trembling grips the godless. Who of us can dwell with the consuming fire? Who of us can dwell with everlasting burning? 1 Corinthians 7, 1-2 of the NIV. Now for the matters you wrote about. It is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman or another man. But since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with his own wife. And each woman with her own husband. This is a life lesson. No matter what you gotta keep pushing. Every day is a blessing. A life lesson. This is a life lesson. No matter what you gotta keep pushing. Every day is a blessing, a lifeless sun, a lifeless sun, a lifeless sun, a lifeless sun.